Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, I'm showing you how to install RetroPie on the Raspberry Pi 4. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, you will need a few basic items. I'm going to leave a link to absolutely everything in the description below. First and foremost, I hope this is not a surprise to you. You will need a Raspberry Pi 4. I do recommend the two or four gigabyte models. In terms of power supplies, I recommend the official Raspberry Pi 4 power supply. You will need a micro, not a mini, but a micro HDMI to HDMI video cable. You will also need a micro SD card, and I do recommend at least a class 10 or better. I also recommend a micro SD card reader that you can plug into your computer so your computer can read that micro SD card. You will also need a USB stick in order to transfer the games from your PC over to the Raspberry Pi. You will also need a controller of some sort that is compatible with the Raspberry Pi, you know, to play your games. And you will also need, well, maybe not also, but it's my recommendation and it's a strong recommendation to have some sort of Raspberry Pi 4 cooler because the Raspberry Pi 4 runs notoriously warm. The warmer the Pi 4 runs, the worse the performance is. So I do recommend some form of cooling for the Pi 4. Once you have all of those items, head over to retropie.org.uk slash download. I will leave a link to this in the description below. Once you're here, scroll down the page just a little bit to where you see Raspberry Pi 4. Click this for the Raspberry Pi 4 image. Now the size of this image is 807 megabytes. While that's downloading, head over to bellina.io slash etcher. This program will write the image to the micro SD card. This is a free program, so just download it here and install it. When RetroPie has finished downloading and Bellina is set up, run Bellina and plug in your micro SD card. So I have my micro SD card plugged into a micro SD card reader, and I'm plugging that into my computer. Now, before you flash this to the micro SD card, double check to make sure the right micro SD card is selected. Once you've done that, all you have to do is just click flash. Once it finishes flashing, feel free to unplug the micro SD card from your computer and place it into your Raspberry Pi 4. But before you step away from the computer, plug in your USB stick. Once you've plugged in the USB stick, right click on it, go into format here. We need to make sure it's either in FAT32 or NTFS. So just select either FAT32 or NTFS and then go down to start. This will erase absolutely everything on your card, just a heads up. So all you do is just click start, click OK. It doesn't take very long. The bigger the USB stick, the longer this process takes. When it's done, just close out of everything here, go into the USB stick, right click, go to new, add new folder. And from here, we want to add a folder called Retro Pi. And that is literally it. From here, we can unplug the USB stick. When you first boot the Raspberry Pi, it will take a bit of time to set up and run through all the processes, but you should be greeted with screens similar to this. Upon your first successful boot up, you will be greeted with this screen right here. Provided your game controller is plugged in and it is compatible with the Raspberry Pi, this step should be pretty easy. So I'm using an Xbox One controller right now plugged into the Raspberry Pi. What I'm going to do is hold the A button here for it to recognize my controller. From here, I'm going to perform button mappings. Now you can change this later. So if you do something wrong in this step, it's absolutely fine. What this is doing right now is setting up all of the buttons so that RetroPie knows what buttons I'm pressing on my controller. It's not set up by default. So I'm going to do D-pad up, down, left, right, start, select. Now it's asking for the A button, B button, X button, Y button, left shoulder, right shoulder, left trigger, right trigger. When you get to the bottom, it says hotkey enable, press anything. For me, I do recommend just using this button here if you are using an Xbox One controller. It makes life a lot easier. Once that's all set up, feel free to plug in your USB stick. At this point, your USB stick should be empty, except for that RetroPie folder. There shouldn't be any games on here just yet. After about 30 seconds or so, unplug the USB stick from your Raspberry Pi and plug it into your computer. We'll now add the games. Now that you're back onto the computer, head back into the USB key that you just plugged in. Head into the RetroPie folder and you will see some brand new folders. There are three folders here, BIOS or BIOS, depending on how you wanna say it, configs and ROMs. So if you go into the ROMs folder here, 
Here are all the systems that this version of RetroPie has emulators installed for. So what we can do from here is import the ROMs into these specific folders. So for this video, I'm going to put four games onto the Raspberry Pi. Ocarina of Time for the N64, Street Fighter 2 for the Game Boy Advance, Streets of Rage 3 for Sega Genesis, and Mega Man X2 for Super Nintendo. To transfer the games over, it's a simple drag and drop. Just drag the game into the corresponding system folder. Now for Genesis, it is listed as Mega Drive. So that is just a heads up here. You will see Mega Drive, that is Sega Genesis. So just drag and drop your game into that folder and it'll be good to go. Once you've placed your ROMs into the corresponding folders, feel free to eject the USB and plug it into your Raspberry Pi. Once you've plugged the USB stick back into the Raspberry Pi from the main menu, go down to Quit and there select Restart Emulation Station. Once you restart Emulation Station, it should automatically populate the systems that you have games for. So here I can see Super Nintendo, I can see Game Boy Advance, I can see Sega Mega Drive or Sega Genesis, and I can see Nintendo 64. From here, you're pretty much good to go and you can immediately start playing games. If you want to configure things even further, head over into the RetroPie menu and you can configure things like audio, Bluetooth controllers, you can configure Wi-Fi, you can set up NetPlay, there are a lot of different options here. I will be doing probably some other videos because the setup for some of the items on here do take a little bit of time. For any of these options, I would recommend plugging in a keyboard and mouse. It will make your life a lot easier. For now, I'm going to hit the back button and go into the Nintendo 64. So one of the issues with previous versions of RetroPie on different Raspberry Pis was that Nintendo 64 emulation wasn't necessarily the best. With a Raspberry Pi 4, N64 emulation should be a heck of a lot better. If I go into the N64 menu, the very first thing I see is my installed game. So I did only install one game. I can install more by just plugging the USB back into the computer, putting some more ROMs on it, and then plugging it back into the Raspberry Pi. When you first select the game, if you press the A button very quickly when it pops up, you can get into the RetroArch menu and change around your settings here. So if you want to change your screen size or a few other settings, you can, there is that option. If you don't want to change any of these settings, you can just select launch or just not hit the A button when that first little gray dialog box pops up. And just like that, Ocarina of Time is up and running and you can see it's actually running fairly smoothly. I haven't done any manual overclocking or any manual settings changes for the N64. This is actually just running with the stock settings from RetroPie. Anyways, that is all I have for today. It took them quite a while to make an official version of RetroPie for the Raspberry Pi 4. Let me know what you think about RetroPie on the Pi 4 in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.